You're watching Throttle House, I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is Car of the Year. No, it's Throttle House Car of the Year. All right, Scotty. 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 A time where we sit on this sofa and we reflect on the year. But before we do that, we have a huge announcement. Big, massive. I was hoping for a drum roll or something. Can you get, there it is. We have created something. Because you, you can stop the drum roll. Sorry. Because you have asked us, how can we contribute? How can we get involved? How can we be part of Throttle House more? And we thought, well, let's just put everybody in one place. So we've made something called Throttle Clubhouse. Very clever. Right? Very smart. Isn't it? Yeah. I thought so. Basically, it's centered around a Discord server, which is like an online chat room. That's where we're going to be chatting with you guys. That's where our, the whole Throttle House team is going to be, and you guys. Because we've hung out with you guys before. Yeah, we're, we're very fortunate that we're content creators that make content for people we would regularly hang out with. This yeah. isn't like, it's not like Fortnite, where everyone's like a 12 year old. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just you, and then yeah. like, okay, I see. And we want to converse, and we yes. want to make it worth your while. So, there are two tiers. The first tier, the basic access, gives you access to the Discord server, where, as Thomas said, there will be shenanigans, there'll be fun channels. Maybe there's a Roast My Car channel. I think we should do that We one. don't know. Yeah. And then you also get a monthly newsletter with the goings on of Throttle House, as well as a column each. That Thomas and I are gonna create and write extra content, um, and that's, that's two columns a month from yes. us to you. And then there's another tier. Yes. If you opt for the full year access to the full access tier, you get not only those things, but also a bunch of other stuff, including a welcome package. Real tangible things. With this. That we're gonna send you. There it is. This is the exclusive custom-made Throttle Clubhouse leather keychain. And it's not just that. You get a decal yep. for your car, yep. which Thomas also oh, has I also somewhere. have that, yeah, that's my job. There it is. <laughs> and a signed poster. Don't have that yet, it's not made yet. And 20% off the merch store. Yep. 20% off the Peloti store. Yes. Because they're great partners. Yep. A live Q&A every month on the Discord. Yep. As well as a monthly merch draw. So once a month, we're just going to send one of you on the Discord a free piece of merch. Something. Hat, t-shirt, we don't know yet. Yeah. And. And. If you sign up to the full year full access, yep. your car will become Car of the Year no. for the next year's video. No, that's not true. That's not one of the that things that we agreed. That is a promise. <laughs> no, it's not a promise. That's... All the other ones are true. That last one is, is not true. Thethrottlehouse.com. Yes. Sign up. Join us at the clubhouse. Yeah, We're we'll going to come there. hang out. Carsten will be there, but he'll be silent. Um, <laughs> Carsten just disappears. <laughs> just Carsten always gonna... logs in, says <laughs> nothing. <laughs> All right, without further ado. Yes. Car of the Year. Here we go. I'm very excited. 2023. So we've done this a little bit differently this year. Now... As you know before, there's only ever been one Throttle House Car of the Year. And a bunch of runners up. And a bunch of runners up. Runner, run, runner ups. Runners up. It's runners up? Runners up. Oh, Like okay. seven up. I'm not sure those are the same thing. But this one's different because we've decided from now on, moving forward, we're going to do a podium of Cars of the Year. So there'll still be runners up. There'll still be runners up, but, but there's be... now gold, silver, bronze. Okay. So let's start with the runners up. Oh, and we're also doing, if you wait until the end, where you'll find some more information about Throttle Clubhouse, um, there's <laughs> also, uh, <clears throat> we've called them the Flat Tire Awards. We try not to be mean, but it's time, it's time to call out the Sometimes cars. Sometimes it's warranted. Yeah. yeah. Those are the worst cars of the year. No, we're not going to call it that. No, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Flat Tire Awards. Flat Tire Awards. Yeah. yeah. They still get an award. Yeah. It's nice of us. Okay, the first runner up. Yeah. These, the, the runners up are not really in order. No, but right? they are they are cars that were so close. Uh, and also the one quick disclaimer about Throttle House Car of the Year is it's the car that we enjoyed the most. The one that left the biggest impression on us and the one that we think yeah. maybe moves that brand in a positive direction or is like a, is a big deal or was extremely difficult to engineer or was just damn good to drive or something like that, right? Yeah. The parameters are completely subjective. We make them up however we It's our favorite them. car. Yeah, that's it. Get over it. Yeah. All right. So, first runner up, Mustang Dark Horse. There we go. Now, the Dark Horse. Powerful. Good looking. Good looking. Great transmission. Sounds fantastic. Yep. Crazy lap time. Really fast lap time. Very sticky tires. Crappy steering. We, we've said that if this had yeah. the Camaro steering, and, and 
There seems to be a, a, a almost disproportional emphasis on steering on this channel, but steering is the way the car talks to you. It's the communication, it's the confidence you get, the joy you get from turning. Yeah. There's so much to it. Yeah. And the Mustang. The, the Dark Horse was better than the regular Mustang just because of the extra sticky rubber yeah. and some suspension changes meant that it was a little bit heavier. But even still, like compared to the Camaro, back to back on the same track on the same day, it's so apparent. And that was not even the Camaro SS. That was a Camaro. It was just a normal Camaro. One LT. Yeah. yeah. LT1, sorry. And that's the point. And, and I do believe that Mr. Jason Camisa called me out on the steering <laughs> not being good in the Mustang. And I would like to say to him right now, I die on this hill. Yeah. I die so on So a fantastic steering car. Steering isn't good. Great cruiser. Very yeah. fast. Crazy lap time for, for boasting pedigree. Yep but otherwise not quite car of the year material. But it's genuinely very close. Fantastic yeah. car, we loved it. Okay, the next two runners up, I'm, yes. I'm gonna group them. Okay, but you, fair enough. Because yeah. they are competitors and very similar. Yep. Um, and they are fancy pants cars, yep. I'm sorry, but the 296 Ferrari and the McLaren Artura. Yes. Hybrid, the plug-in hybrid, plug hybrid. six-cylinder supercars. Both of these cars were fantastic. V unbelievable. Both like, almost equally unreliable, interestingly. They had their own things go going <laughs> yes, wrong. right, yeah. But, and, and for that reason, I love them both equally as my... It's stunning as well. Yeah, like, they're just so good looking. They drove so well. The Artura, in terms of chassis, drove better. The Ferrari had the more exciting power plant. Right. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What did we call the Altura? The worst best car ever? The worst best car Or was it the best ever? worst best car? Best worst car ever. Is it, are those different? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I think we called it the worst best. Worst best car ever. Yeah. No, it, they were both brilliant cars and the, the 296 is absolutely proof that the future of battery laden hybrid supercars is bright. Yeah, insane horsepower number. It sounded ridiculous. better than the F8. They were so quick, both of these cars. The, you know, they inspired us to make our own car sounds. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, yeah. potentially left to the professionals that. Yeah. But yeah, um, not car of the year just because they just came. The, the 296, inf the, the, the interaction with the infotainment and everything was too awful. Yeah. And the Artura, the infotainment sometimes didn't show up. <laughs> yeah, to show up for the party. So therefore, yeah. not car for the year. So anyway, those two cars, very expensive. We're sorry. We're going to go back to reality with the next one. It is the Lamborghini Rivaldo. <laughs> Also a runner the up. way to say that probably is it, they said land on a sort of soft B. It's, yeah, so it's not Revuelto. And it's not Rebuelto with a hard B. It's a Rebuelto. It's, it's, it's like, I have a Spanish friend who helped me try and pronounce it, and, I, and he was laughing as what I heard was replicating exactly what he said, and his answer was, you're not even close. But this is the best I could do. It's Rebuelto. That sounded pretty good to me. That's as, that's as good as it gets Does the me. car sound pretty good? Because I wasn't there for this. You weren't there, and that's one of the reasons why it isn't Car of the Year, because we do have to come to a consensus. Yeah, that and right? I guess limited time. You're just on Didn't the get to drive it on the road. So, unfortunately, it wasn't really a, a... It was that car in its perfect element, that is, yeah. being able to hit ridiculous speeds on not even full straightaways. The downforce was incredible. The car sounded wild. It looked so good, and it was just bonkers well, fast. Well, it's, it's also, you know, that sort of hypercar concept of the, of the hybridization. So, yep. it takes what the 296 and the Arteria did and to another level, and you have a naturally aspirated V12. That's the biggest thing, and that's why it's definitely a runner-up and, and was a contender for Carlier, because it has a naturally aspirated V12 in a brand new car. That's insane. Yeah. Right? That's proof that if you just put, like, give me a naturally aspirated anything with some hybrid assistance, and I'm happy. It's working. That it formula works. is working. Right? All right. The okay. next car. Here we go. This is a car that does away with an engine entirely. Yes. Um, and is much, much more affordable. Yeah. And we had it in a color yep. that looks not dissimilar to what my newborn leaves in a diaper. While I was at the Revuelto launch. <laughs> the Rolls Royce Spectre. Spectre. 
What do you what do you say about that? Other than it's one of the most supreme. Well, I was going to say motor cars. Oh no, it is a motor. It's electric yeah. motors. Yeah. It, it, it's it's the 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 pinnacle of of passenger vehicle. Incredible. Absolutely incredible car. It, the application of electric powertrain to that vehicle. You know, charging hiccups aside with what you know however you you can't go on a long road trip in the cold okay yeah, you can't but just driving that around toronto first of all it was so fun the level at which it insulates you from the outside yeah thanks again to steve's music for letting us play with that That is absolutely insane. The drums are right there. They're just literally three feet. The, just, uh, there's just, you get in it and you, there's this like f warm fuzziness. It was so smooth. It was probably the smoothest car I've ever driven. Yeah. Like yeah. I can't It could think... steal your wife. <laughs> yes. No, it was, it was a genuinely brilliant. And you know, you might say that it's a bit of a cop out because of course an EV is going to be smooth. Yeah. And maybe and of course it's, a super expensive Rolls Royce is going to yes, be good. Yes, and maybe it's more impressive when a Phantom with a V12 engine in it is damn near that smooth. Yeah, it's more impressive, but like still, as what Rolls is setting out to do, that one made sense. But somehow, it's not even on the podium. It isn't even on the podium, but Which you know what is on the podium? <laughs> I'm so excited about this one. Go on. Third place goes to the Prius. Specifically, the Prius Prime. Yeah. The Prius was fantastic. The it Prius was. Prime somehow was. We all drove it. That was the one that the whole team sort of ended up living with for a few days each. Yep. And no one wanted to hand it over to each other. It was, it was so like nice. it's just so lovely. The ride improved so much. Yep. The looks, the power was fun. Yep. Just driving it around was so fun. And dang, is it trendy? With all its hashtags and such, I could live. I could live without the hashtags. <laughs> I have to be honest. Um, well, the, honestly, the only downside to that car for me was that it was front-wheel drive. Yeah, the, currently you can only get the Prime in front-wheel drive. Maybe yeah. that they'll, maybe that's a cheeky thing they'll change and they'll maybe. suddenly announce an all-wheel drive Prime. Yeah. But that and the, the the things that let it down slightly were the uh, actual getting into the back of the Prius is not as spacious as something like a Corolla. And yep. the trunk space as well is also is no match for the Corolla. And quick mention to the Corolla hybrid all-wheel drive. That is you arguably a more sensible car. It is, yeah. It's just not nearly as good. The application of the, no. the EV doesn't come close. And the uh, just that, the, I think the ride comfort and installation of the Prime, plus the sort of fun, chuckable nature. Yep. And the new good looks. It's also pretty quick. Most improved player by far. If, they, if that was an award for Scotty, most improved. Most improved. Goes yes. to the Prius Prime. Okay. Silver. Is it a trophy or a medal? We haven't made the we haven't made the awards yet. We don't even know. To Madofi. And the silver Madofi goes to a 911. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> the GT3 RS. The GT3 RS. <laughs> looked back at previous Scotties, didn't we? Yes. And we realized we went C8, GG3, C8, Z06. And yeah. then, well, now this isn't, this isn't number one, but number GG3 one. RS is now here. It's, it's, it's just, just annoyingly good. No matter what you do or say, you can't deny certain things about it. No. That is, it, it is probably the most uh, like track-focused, well-engineered, precise instrument I've ever driven that's not actually a race car. And it topped our leaderboard. It topped the leaderboard. Right to the top. And there, there's actually two 911s that we didn't get to try this year. We didn't do the Dakar yep. and we didn't do the um, ST. That's right. And not to say that those wouldn't have been contenders because they may very well I think been. the ST would have been right up there. I think you're right. Yeah. it's sort of got a lot of the GT3 RS magic. But the GT3 RS is one of those cars where... And this is sort of how we kind of come to the, the decision of car of the year. It's one of those cars where when we get off, we can't shut up about. Yeah. <laughs> just like, just kept talking about. Well, have you driven it? You know, like yeah. we were like, Carsten, get in there. You've yeah. got to try it. And 
I, I, I just couldn't believe the the actual forces that car was capable of generating. Like the like the like the turn in force at speed was just like skull crushing, and the braking. I actually, long story, I make it real short. I went through the data between that and the GT3, and the distance later that I was braking in the GT3 RS was shocking. I didn't realize that until because like of the, the downforce. Yeah, yeah, because the downforce and the tires and, and the, the whole setup of the car, right? Yeah. I was just able to slam on the brakes and then actually peel off them like you do with you would with a downforce car. Not trail braking. That's different. Long story. But anyway, that's an amazing car, and I think it deserves to be on the podium just because it's just so good technically yeah. and cool. It looks great. Dad's in Malibu, and I love taking it to the exactly. car. Exactly. Okay, here we go. Um, actual car of the year. Actual car of the year, and we're mad about this. All right. We are. Are we? We're mad. We're uh, mad. We, you should know why we're mad. Because it doesn't exist? <laughs> In our hands. The Lotus Amira. Yeah. Lotus Amira that we still <laughs> don't have in our possession, even though we have an order in for one three years ago. Yeah, well, it feels like three years. It's been a while, though. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of you are, have asked what's going on with the Amira. We don't know. We we've, don't even know. We've heard nothing. Yeah, um, that's where they're at. But I think for the price and the looks and, and the, looks. the experience and the drive, and, you know, its foibles are, you know, drive, first drive foibles at least are small. They're few. Yeah. You know, maybe the shifter could be a bit smoother. Even then, I enjoyed it, and you can see the linkage. So, yeah, I don't know. But this is the thing. We, we went through, and we're like, is it the Lotus Amira? I can't Wait, why it. wasn't it the GT3 RS? Because the Lotus Amira, first of all, uh, <laughs> I was about to say you can get one. That's a Porsche <laughs> joke, but you can't. Um, <laughs> but, but so the car of the year is the Prius Pride. Yeah, that's right, yeah. No, no the Lotus Amira is a much more accessible price point for the amount of experience that it gives you. Yes. Assuming you can get one, which you can't. Um, but no, You can. They're about to start arriving yes, apparently in North about America. To start arriving. Europe has had them for a while now. Yeah. And there's been some funky Lotus problems, and I know that because it has a V6 engine from a Toyota Camry that people think it's going to be super reliable. That's not where Lotuses fall down. That's <laughs> not the problem. You know, every day the on mirror the... mirror falls yeah. off. Or, the, yeah. <laughs> or something, it's, the car doesn't start because brake pedal needs servicing. <laughs> yeah. I saw that today on the Facebook group. <laughs> oh my God. Um, so it's still very much a Lotus. Yeah. But, it, but like the steering, the, the, the engine, the response, the chassis, the damping, the way that it feels, the lightness, the style, the seating position it's just such a sports car and it's it's more than the sum of its parts in that sense because it, it just creates this package of just extreme desirability immediately and if you've seen videos of the Amira, i don't know if you felt it as well you can just sort of through the screen be like i need, I need that what there's, a <laughs> there was, there's actually a moment we were talking about we trying to decide if it was car of the year where you were like yeah i know it has all those things but i just i don't know blah 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 if it was car of the year and then you pulled up a photo of it and i heard silence on the phone he's like Damn, it's so good looking. And that was the thing that pushed you over the edge. It's so desirable. And it's, it's not, and it's not it's that different so from the, the, the latest Avoras. No, uh, no. But they are also excellent. And yep. I think with the new look and the new tech inside, yep. uh, it, it really changed the game. And I think there's going to be more variants that are going to get more hardcore and more crazy. Because yep. in that sense, this is kind of just a Carrera. And then the people or, that buy or, them will get them in, in 2039. I, I think there's suddenly you're going to start seeing a slew of them arrive. <laughs> okay. But it was it was an absolutely. We may still yet cancel our order. By the way, we haven't decided. Yeah, if it doesn't come for like four more years. Yeah, we'll we're, we're going to be. We sooner. don't need. You know, I'm happy to report on it. We don't need to own it. Yes. So, um, but it was absolutely brilliant. It so was. engaging, more engaging than the Cayman GTS four litre. Genuinely, significantly more. Yeah. No question, the Cayman's a better car. Uh, yes. The Amir is a better driver's car. Yep. You just have to deal with the stuff that comes with that, and you know, Lotus support is probably non-existent so yeah it's a risk it's a risk but it's an adventurous one and i honor those who those <laughs> about to buy a lotus soldiers. we salute you okay. um so we have some honorable mentions which we're going to list off before 
the we do tire. the flat tire awards. So congratulations to Lotus and the Amira. Hopefully you can make it. Um, <laughs> and uh, you're doing some weird stuff otherwise at the moment. So yeah, please. There's questions about the rest of it. But yeah, this is one of the good ones. All right, honourable mention number one: Integra Type S. Yep. This is a car that's just great. It's great. Um, it's which, just very much a Type R with different yeah. stuff around it. Yeah. But which is great. Which is great. And we, we've said that this car, if it existed 15 years ago, and it sat in, amongst the company of a 330 BMW and all this other stuff, it would just be one of the cars. It would be one of the cars. But the yeah. reality is it's one of the last driver's cars at this price point. So yeah. for that reason, it is an honorable mention. Yep. And it is fantastic. The Aston Martin DB12. This is, this is a great car, but it was pretty much a we fixed all the problems that we should have fixed in the first place sort of thing. Yeah, and we're still charging you $300,000 yeah, for it. Yeah, it was a so, lot of money. So um, excellent car. Brilliant car. Massively, massively improved. Yep, and, and uh, we loved it, and it is definitely an honorable mention. You just can't tell it's a DB12. No, you can't? <laughs> it just looks like a DB12. Oh, it's like a DB12. Yeah, exactly. It's like a yeah. DB12, yeah. Um, okay. Next car, same genre, the Maserati Gran Turismo, the V6. Surprisingly, quite good to drive. Delightful. Yep. Full baby Ferrari vibes. Yep. Um, not even baby Ferrari, maybe somewhat Ferrari yep. at this point. And yep. it just was so expensive. The issue is that it costs $1 million. Yeah. <laughs> it was oh, like, is that not what it was? No, the one we drove was like 330000 And the no. interior, as like, well laid out as it was, just wasn't up to that number. No. So it doesn't hit it. Yeah. This one, honorable mention, is controversial. I, I, go on. So... I put it in the honorable mention list. This is my choice. The uh, the new M2 with the automatic transmission. Because you guys have heard us go on about the um, manual M2 before. It, I want to say, for the last time, yeah, we never said it was a bad car. No, you said it was objectively better. It was objectively better in almost every single way to the previous M2. I just like the previous M2 better. That was my opinion, and everyone didn't for, listen Yeah, for to all that. the changes they made, they had made it less enjoyable. But the M2 with the carbon fiber pack and the auto on our track. On our track, I did some big smoke and yeah. drifts in that thing, and I had a great time driving it. Don't so mess with that car on a track. It's, it's really good. Yeah. yeah. I chucked the new 7 Series in here yeah. while we're on the BMW. Yeah, I kind of didn't agree with that one. Well, it's tough titties because I think it's great. <laughs> I think it looks a bit strange. Yep. But as a passenger experience, yeah, as a discount nice. Rolls Royce Spectre, yeah, I think they've yeah. done a fantastic job. I think the interior is beautiful. I love the interaction bar, whatever it's called. Screen? The, the screen down? that flips down is next no, level for the passenger. Cool. No, it's a great car. It honestly. does all the things a Maybach does Yeah. in terms of flair. And I always think of it, if you get picked up at the airport in one and you see something happen, like the screen come down, you go... Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. that's, I think the 7 Series is great. The only issue I have with the 7 Series, final note about that, is that if, it, if you told me this is the new Apple EV and it did all of those things, I would go, yeah, no, it's cool. It looks you, a bit weird. You called but... me when you picked up, when you picked this car up and you said it shouldn't drive as well as it does. And I don't think an Apple one would do that. I don't think that that's what, that was the 7 Series that I said that It was, that it about. was the i7, 100%. Was it? I remember I every phone call I've ever got from you. <laughs> no, the i5 I picked up, which is also a brilliant car. Honorable, also honorable mention, the i5. Seatbelts tightened. Shaking. Oh. <laughs> what the That's hell? actually it's very dramatic. You can't just throw one in, we have to agree. It was actually a great car, honorable mention, yeah, i5. Less good yeah. looking than the previous year, slightly different philosophy. But really, really quick. did not want to give that car back. Yeah, it was fun, seriously. Fit into my life like a glove. I liked it. Final one, it's a Ferrari. The Puro Sanjui. Puro <laughs> Sanjui. It is a 
naturally aspirated V12 SUV. Drove really well. To, yeah, to, to take on the Urus. And it, it is more money than the Urus, but it's more Ferrari than the Urus's Lamborghini. It um, just... Uh, anyway, yeah, yeah, it just uh, it overheated in the hills in which it was designed. Um, that's the major problem with it. But assuming that that was just an early test car prototype, that the reason it didn't get which into it the... It, which it wasn't. <laughs> um, but let's just let's just say for the sake of argument, yeah. benefit of the doubt, it was an early test car prototype. For the which, lawyers. Which it wasn't. Yeah. Um, I think it wouldn't end up in the actual um, runners-up because right. I, the interior is still too uh, difficult to decipher. They've improved it. It was also quite plain. Yeah. You know, you look at things like the Bentayga and, yeah. and there's a bit more excitement going on. But yeah. I don't know. I, th I think it fits the modern-day Ferrari philosophy. It does. It's a very good car. It's still a very good car. Yeah. Okay. So there's the honorable mention. <clears throat> Moment of truth. Flat tire awards. Now, to all the manufacturers that these are about, we are sorry ahead of time. Know that yeah. it is not a reflection on you. Um, and if by chance the manufacturer we're talking about is intrinsically linked to an entire government that has the ability to send people our way, yeah, it's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. It's a joke. It's not even real. No, it um, matters actually. So I'm related to that. The Vinfast VF8. It's our first flat tire. First flat tire. This is not ranked. We've chosen three cars. Yeah, so they're equally crap. I mean, flat tirey. Yeah. Um, it, it just wasn't ready. No, that's it. I mean. It, to be fair, give them another couple years or something and maybe it would be fine. But yeah, it was just not dialed in. Pretty good looking. Yeah. Nice and nice interior, genuinely nice interior compared to things like the, the Tesla. Yep. Um, the ride was, you know, the Tesla ride is not fantastic. The Model Y ride no, is quite punishing. Good. Yes. But this was more sickly than punishing. It was sort of yeah. all over the place. Uh, and it just had some weird quirks and it, it became detestable. Yeah, you, you, you can watch the video. It's, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the first flat tire. So moving on to the second flat tire award, it's it's the BMW XM. Yeah, we haven't driven the label red, which by the way has been renamed label. You keep saying that. You told me that, and I've been seeing people call it the label red everywhere. So where people, are you getting that people from? commit. People commit. Okay. How be, like the same way how people say 400Z. Yes, yeah, the 400Z. Yeah. 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 Um, by it, the way, I, I bet you the Z Nismo might have earned somewhere, but we didn't get a chance to drive it this year. No. Yeah. No. So, yeah, the XM, it just was overweight yep. and overpriced. Ride was harsh. Didn't have enough special. It had a cool it was ceiling. It did have a neat ceiling. Yeah, it was really well designed on the inside. But Except even for the then, volume knob, for some reason, you had to spend 650 <laughs> times to get it to... And the door cars were less interesting than they are in a new X5. Yeah, so it was confusing. X, it kind of, and, you know, that sort of with the packaging and the bag and the back and, and this sort yeah. of, like... It's it just the, really screamed marketing. Yeah, it marketing advertised first. itself as yeah. the, the pinnacle of X and M together, and it was not the it best of either. neither of those things. So it gets a little flat tire. That's just a little flat tire. Just a little one. It's like a <laughs> poke. Yeah. Um, okay, here we go. This one, I think, it was, has been an emotional slight. This is technically two cars, actually. Yes. With one bias to be the more egregious of errors by the manufacturer. It, well, we can group it then as the AMG C's. Yeah, so the new C63 and the new C43. Um, we had very different experiences in both. We had the 43 here locally. Yep. We drove it around. We drag raced it. Yep. We tried to make it work. Tried to make it work. You had yep. a few issues with it. Yeah. The C63S we had in, we picked up in, oh no, where did you pick it up? In Italy. I picked it up in in Italy. Yeah, we yeah. did we did a thousand miles in that. We, we went a lot south of to Monaco. We drove to we finished in Germany. We did, yeah, yeah. Um, and in the end, it just kind of wasn't good. No, it just it just felt like a it just felt like a more compromised C class. It didn't yeah. feel like a sixty three. It didn't have any of that special sauce. And. And I feel like it's not even fair to always say, oh, it didn't have the V8. Like, just take the engines out of the equation for a second. And I thought that the rest of the C63S was not dialed in enough. Well, because it couldn't account for its weight. No. And, and, and it's not actually ever been a very light car. You know, no, the, the old no. C63 Cooper, I, th I think, was north of 4,000 pounds. Yeah, but the ride was always acceptable. Yeah, but I think once you get to a certain weight, and I, I, the horsepower number stops mattering. You know, if this was a cauldron of making the perfect sports sedan yeah. and you kept pouring, you know, here's a bit of horsepower, oh cool, here's a bit of weight. No, stop it. 
here's a bit of horse and a stop. <laughs> and it just, you, like, where does it stop? You know, yeah, exactly. Do you want a 9,000 pound sedan that has yeah. 1,700 horsepower? I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it just, it ended up being a car that as a whole package did not work very well. And the C43 was not any better, honestly. And yeah. if you put the engine back in the equation, no, a 63 should not have a four cylinder. Either, you know what, I don't even know what they should have done, but it should have been a six. It should have been a version of the six, if that. Well, the, the C300 is still good. And yep. the new CLE, which is sort of a combination of E and C, um, yes, is getting the 53, and it's also getting a 63 at some point, which might be the four cylinder. But that would be really weird. It would be weird. But the 53 is getting the uh, that that mild hybrid six cylinder, which yeah. is excellent. It's a great engine. It's smooth. Loved that engine. Got some better sounds. So there is hope. It just is no longer in the C63. Maybe they just do a black edition and shove a V8 in it and go, we're sorry. I don't know. Yeah, yeah we're sorry. Yeah, yeah it's right. Yeah, <laughs> we planned this the whole time. Um, anyway, so, car of the year, Lotus Samira, and there are now some flat tire awards. Uh, yeah. Again, don't take it too personally if you happen to own one of those cars. The truth is, all of these cars are good compared to most cars from 10 years ago. Apart, but, from, uh, yeah, apart from the VinFast. Apart from the VinFast, yeah, <laughs> yeah, apart from that one. Um, is that weird? I feel like the flat tire awards ends for Scotty on a downer, almost. Right, so let's bring it back up. Throttle Clubhouse, you should join. Check it out. Um, Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll vote. We'll introduce voting on it as well. Ooh, we can on do the that. the Discord. You can vote Car of the Year. Yeah. You can do loads of things. We haven't even thought of it. We haven't even thought of them yet. We'll invite some of you to be moderators. You can think of stuff. That would be fun. And hopefully it can also be a place where you can ask us questions. Like, we'd get a lot of questions from you about, you know, what car should I buy? What do you think about this? Should I do this mod? You know, where do I, how do I start sim racing? How do I, whatever it is. This is going to be the one spot where it's easy for James and I to do our best to respond to you. And if we can't, there's going to be other people in this clubhouse that will know these yeah. answers. That's maybe maybe idea. we'll have a photo thread where you have to post your car key with the key ring in some exotic location. Oh, interesting. We're just try and best each other. Right. I, I, I'm Here's going me on to... the toilet. Here's me in the upstairs toilet. Here's me in the I've toilet already, again. I've already won. See, I, I'm ahead of everybody. Here's the keychain in the basement. It's a low bar. It's, yeah, it's, it's starting to move up from here. Thethrowhouse.com, sign up, join us. Yep. Um, but as far as this year, thank this is, you. This was a good one. Yeah. This is yeah. a good year. Thank yeah. you for a lovely year. Um, we're really glad we continue to do this. and uh, We're going to continue. Now you can follow along on throttleclubhouse.com. Yeah. And there'll be some adventures, more adventures next year. I actually year. got the address wrong there. I'm going to say that again. Cool. It's thethrottlehouse.com. Yeah, we weren't cool enough to get the good domain. No. No.